The Pittsburgh Steelers have talked with Cam Hayward about a potential contract extension. What might that look like? What should happen? And what will the Steelers defensive line look like in 2024? All that more here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Mark Bergen of Believe in Steelers. It's going to be a fun episode. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find the show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms you can just apply more on them later. Like I said, we're joined by my man, Mark, over from believe in Steelers you can catch his podcast the same way as you catch mine your favorite podcasting apps YouTube he does the show with Ike Taylor all the time he's a great guy to have on the show Mark welcome back man how you been CC I like the intro music thank you for having me it's got <laughs> me in a, a nice mood here on a Tuesday before we get the schedule release we're, absolutely we're like, we'll like almost 24 hours away now Pretty much, basically, yeah. So this this is coming out as the the uh, we're recording this early Tuesday, where, but this will be our Wednesday episode. Uh, so tonight we will get into we will see the NFL schedule release. We'll talk about games and where we want to see them and where they could be later in this show. But I want to talk about something that popped up recently with some of our colleagues over at SteelersNow.com. Uh, Nick Farabaugh, Alan Saunders breaking it down. Uh, they talked to. Cam Hayward at a recent community uh, event that he was doing, and he revealed to them, like, hey, you know, I've talked to the Steelers about an extension, saying you'll see what happens. He wants to play two or three more years in the NFL. He really wants to play three more years. He's looking for the opportunity, and he'll see what happens. But he wants to play, and he wants to play in Pittsburgh. Uh, right now, Mark, you look at Cam Hayward's contract. He said this is the last year of his current deal. He, he's a $22.4 million cap hit, about $16 million uh, of that are, you know, our money that's getting paid to him this year. 6.4 million of that is locked up already in, in signing bonus money. This is a 35 year old guy, but it's a 35 year old guy who's been a captain for the Steelers for a very long time. Mm -hmm. He has been in a, a, a pro bowl guy. The last year was the first time he wasn't a pro bowl player in seven in the past in the six years before that he's been you know a, a, fa a face of the team a captain of the team if you're the pittsburgh steelers are you trying to work out a two to three year extension for cam hayward or are you trying to make you do a one-year deal and see how he does this year because he is 35 and he is coming off an injury that you know kept him out about six or seven games then also never let him get back to 100 percent this year yeah, I would try to rework this deal because the Steelers are a better team when Cameron Hayward's on the field versus when they're not. I also look at it from the standpoint of, well, let me put a GM hat on for a second and a front office hat on for a second. On an open market, Cam Hayward's owed $16 million, His cap hits $22.4 million this year. He wouldn't make that much money. So right. if I'm Omar Khan in this front office, let's move that money around. Let's get an extension on the table and keep Cam in a Steelers uniform. And let me say this too before any accuses me of being anti Cam Hayward, Walter Payton, man of the year, what he means to the city of Pittsburgh. I look at it from this standpoint, Chris. The same way when Mike Tomlin says that Marquise Pouncey played at a high enough level that he should have a championship, he should have a Super Bowl to Agreed. show for it. I feel the same way about Cam Hayward with his level of play what he's brought to this franchise, this organization in this city, keeping him around for two or three more years on a more team friendly deal gives him more an opportunity to say, Hey, let's go have some playoff success. Something that the Steelers haven't had since January, 2017. Agreed. It's something that, that you want to keep Cam Hayward around for also because even beyond just his talents, he is a, a locker room leader. He's a guy that galvanizes others. People get surround that man again. When when the week Franco when Franco has died the day before they were going to retire his jersey and honor him for the immaculate rece reception and everything that he did, the guy who carried the Franco Harris flag out the tunnel was Cam Hayward. He, he's he's that guy. He ties your past to your future, mm. and, and that's a big part of what they're well, trying to do right now. 
Well, that kind of goes into him understanding the standard is the standard. And what I mean Mm -hmm. by that is he was, you know, he's your longest member, uh, uh, member on the team right now, but he was playing with some of the guys that were part of the last Super Bowl teams. You know, he was teammates with them. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, understanding where the tradition of Steelers football players is, Hey, if you're really revered and respected, it's, Hey, he could have played with us. And I'm talking about whether it's the 2000 Super Bowl or back in the seventies, when you earn respect in this organization, there's that understanding between the the players, regardless of generation of he could have played with us. Cam Hayward fits that mold. He fits that description of he could have played with us and say what you want with him. Yes, I think he slowed down. I think injuries were a big part of that a season ago. So I think he's got something to prove. Uh, his best football is probably behind him, but it's no secret the Steelers are a better football team with him on the field, period. Even if that's that, like, what was he at? Like 70% last year? Whatever percentage you want to yeah. put on it. The Steelers are a better football team when, he's on when the Cam field. Hayward is playing versus when he is not. And I think there's some people that, you know, this happens every year with recency bias when they like people were calling TJ Watt injury prone because he got injured the year before. That was his first major injury when he was out for, for half the season uh, the year before. And people were like, oh, he got hurt at the end of the season. Yeah, he got hurt for a game. And that just happened to be the playoff game. It was unfortunate, but it was one of those crazy injuries that happened there. Cam Hayward's the same deal. Like this was a this was a, an injury that hit him early in the season. And in fact, he kind of rushed himself back so that he could be, be with the Steelers because he wanted to get them to the playoffs because that's who Cam Hayward is. He's a warrior. He's a battle. He's going to come out. And he's going to fight. And that's why I agree with you. You think the Steelers should absolutely extend Cam Hayward and yeah, make it more team friendly, give themselves a chance here. And I think Cam Hayward might even understand that he's made, he made a lot of money with the Pittsburgh Steelers and he'll still make a lot of money with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I I think that he gets like, look, they're building something right now and there's a chance for them to be a serious, um, you know, serious contenders in the NFL if they make the right moves. So this is their chance. Um, And and again, Cam Hayward, this is a guy who, again, if you're going to say that he's, injury prone or whatever guess how many games he played each of the seasons prior prior, each of the two seasons prior to this last one he played 17 games in each of them and that's at a physical demanding defensive line position where he's battling and he's at the he's at the crux of every defensive play for the for the Steelers oh and by the way in those two seasons both times double digit sacks so this is a guy who delivers Mark. I'm right with you. He's a captain. He's a player that you that you want to keep around. You got to find a way, way to extend him. And I think Omar Khan will because I think Omar Khan's smart and savvy and he'll find a way to make it still solid for the Steelers. And what might even happen is this extension comes maybe during training camp or just before training camp and they use they they use the timing of it to say like, "Okay, let's see how much money we need to 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 make to to free up for this year." to go get whatever player they might want to trade for. And that might be like the precursor. Like that might be the sign of like, Hey, the Steelers might know who they want to get and, and how much salary cap space they need to create. If they wanted to trade for Cortland Sutton or, you know, a a defensive back or whoever they'd want to add to this roster. You're in my brain, Chris, which is a dangerous place to be. (laughs) And I look at it from the standpoint of, yes, you look at what's on paper right now. I, I, Again, I love Cam Hayward, but it's like, ooh, like I need all pro level of production for how much money they're giving him right Right. now. Right. That can easily change between now and week one of the season. And you mentioned just the production, and you also mentioned the the leadership. You talked about this on my, my show last week, Chris. The leadership and the void that was on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, that money might be more than what you want to spend on a 35-year-old Cam Hayward, but if this is his last year with the Steelers, how are you filling that leadership void? Mm-hmm. I, I think a deal and extension does get done, and it really just depends on, hey, Cam, how long do you want to continue to play for? Because you've spent more than a decade in the league at this point. Yeah, 
yeah, I agree. He, I, I know this is also, I mean, literally, like, I don't remember this. My parents tell me this, like, this guy played Little League Baseball at the same field that I did at Frick Park growing up. Like, his, you know, he, he has ties to Pittsburgh beyond just the Steelers. I, I think Cam Hayward wants to stay here. I think they want him to stay there. It's a mutual thing. They will work this out, in my opinion. This seems to be a no-brainer. But what's not a no-brainer is how the rest of the defensive line will play around Cam Hayward this upcoming season. Keanu Benton, DeMarvin Leal, uh, uh, Larry Ogunjobi. There's a lot of question marks as far as how this group will make itself out. We'll talk about that. After this first break here on the Locked on Steelers podcast, Chris Carter, Mark Bergen, stick with us. We'll be right back. But first, I want to remind you, this show is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL, and it, baseball is in full swing as well. So that makes FanDuel your number one place to bet on every single game on every single sport. Right now, new customers get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet or more. That's $150 to, to, to use on point spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that's safe secure and super easy to use just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and take advantage of this offer today that's fanduel.com slash locked on for new customers to get 150 dollars in bonus bets back if your first bet of five dollars or more wins and that's on fanduel america's number one sports book Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter, Mark Bergen of of Believe in Steelers. Mark, let's talk about the rest of this defensive line right now. As as it's constructed, your defensive line is Cam Hayward, Larry Ogunjobi, Keanu Benton, DeMarvin Leal, Montrevious Adams, and then they've also added Logan Lee. They still have Braden Fajoko, Jonathan Marshall, Adeem Lowry. Looking at this group, there is the potential for guys to step up this year. But one player who I think we are all kind of putting to the back of our mind because he didn't play much this much this year. And he was even a healthy scratch for several games is the Marvin Leal third round pick just two years ago, came into the Steelers and had a promising, you know, part of his rookie season when he was healthy, that made it look like maybe this guy could be the truth. And then he wasn't in, in, in his second season, in the NFL uh, recently, former Steeler, Arthur Motes, who we have on this show. He also has a great podcast. Check him out there too. Um, he came out and he he was like, listen, I think Arthur Motes, you know, he has a build that can make him dangerous in the NFL. He said he rem- there's parts of his game that reminds him of Stephon Tuitt. And listen, DeMarvin Leal, I, I've been a person, I think he has the tools to be to be a dangerous guy. But he but part of what Arthur Motes is saying, and I agree with this too, he has to commit to it. He has to get sharper in his technique. He has to be, you know, a stronger guy in the middle. And DeMarvin Leal was brought in to be a tweener, Mark. They were using him out on the edge as well as like as a three and a five technique at times. They were they were moving him around. But to me, if I'm DeMarvin Leal, the biggest thing I'm trying to do is I'm going to show you that I can stuff the run. I can put, I can be big, mean, nasty in the hole and be part of a future duo with Keanu Benton because beyond just Cam Hayward, right now, I think the Steelers feel like Benton's part of the future of the defensive line. If Leal or someone else doesn't step up this year, next year might be a first-round pick at D-line. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, the Marvin Leal got just two more years with the Steelers before he probably hits free agency. And then at that point, you're trying to do that while being a backup for the Steelers to prove to the rest of the NFL that you're worth a big mm-hmm. contract. To me, this is a huge year for DeMarvin Leal. How do you think that he could play out this year for the Steelers? Yeah, I think you laid that out perfectly, Chris. And you know what you're going to get from Cam Hayward. You know what you're going to get from Larry Ogan, Joby, two players that have a ton of experience mm-hmm. playing in the AFC North. I really liked what we saw from Keanu Benton as a rookie. And in year two, okay. I might be as bullish on him as any player on the Steelers roster. Leal's got to get into that mix if he wants to be part of this team's future. So I think you lay that out perfectly. Let me approach it from this standpoint as well. We're coming off a season where Minka Fitzpatrick, who's your ball hawk, all pro safety. I know he had injuries. Zero takeaways for Minka Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. Coming off the year before that, when he had, what, six interceptions. Yep. And I go back to that Atlanta Falcons game two years ago to seal the game. Minka Fitzpatrick gets a game-clinching interception. How is that set up? What initiated that? It's a bull rush by Cam Hayward Mm -hmm. up front, put pressure on the quarterback, force him into a pass that he doesn't want to make. Minka Fitzpatrick makes the right read, intercepts the ball, ball game. That complimentary piece, we've so 
we've seen bits and pieces and flashes of it a little bit with Leal. I thought we saw more of that from Benton a season ago. Leal's got to get into that mix, into that playmaking mix, that complimentary football to where his name's popping up, stuffing the run, for, forcing quarterbacks to move around in the pocket, to move out of the pocket, to right. make plays. It's a huge season for him because, like you said, Chris, if he does not do that this season, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I look at it from the standpoint, love Cam Hayward. We talked about him in the first segment. Love Larry Joby. what he's done. They're both north of 30. The NFL yeah. stands for not for long. It is a young man's sport. And the Steelers defense, which has been top five in the NFL for the last five years, to sustain that, you have to have a stout interior. And you're going to need studs up front at the defensive tackle position to be able to do that. Absolutely. And I think another thing that does work in DeMarvin Leal's favor is he's very young. This guy just turned 23 in March. So, like, we've seen, like, if you even go back, and I'm not saying that DeMarvin Leal is Cam Hayward, but if you go back to, to Cam Hayward's early years, when he was 22, 23 years old, he wasn't doing it. He, he was a backup. Granted, he was a backup behind really legendary Steelers <laughs> defensive linemen like K Casey Hampton, like Aaron Smith, like Brett Kiesel. So he, there was a reason for him to be back there. But even when he became a starter in 2013, there was like, there was a little bit of promise like when he was 24, 25 years old, but he wasn't destroying teams. It wasn't until I think the 2017, when the whole world World stopped and the, oh no, no no that guy's a bad man and and, and i think that's when everyone kind of realized that granted the steelers i think knew by 2013 2014 hey this guy's gonna be really doggone good uh he's he's gonna play up to his potential here um i i think it sometimes takes time to grow into being a strong powerful defensive lineman who also has that technique in the nfl it took time for uh cam hayward to do it it also it's funny enough it took time for the person arthur most compared leal to to stefan to it to get into it stefan to it you know had some moments here and there but there were seasons where he was starting 12 14 games and he was only getting three or four sacks and it was like mm, well, maybe he could develop a little bit more and i think that as he got older stefan to it started to grasp the things that he needed to get better at and then it was just unfortunate that you know he, he had the injury and then his his brother his brother died and he had a lot of set that that sad thing happens that ended his career at 27 years old but stefan to it this was supposed to be his prime like he was going to be 30 31 years old this year and playing for the steelers at a very high level and kind of carrying it on so they didn't need to have an ogan joby here so to me this is the chance for leal to take that step up but i also like your point too i think keanu benton is the future like maybe the centerpiece of this defensive line unless they go get somebody in this next defensive line class in the first round that is going to be another like super dog to pair with Benton for the long term. Yeah, I want to piggyback off one thing you said there too. Sacks aren't always the best measure, particularly for interior offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. And that's to where, like I know in seasons past where it's like, well, TJ Watt has so many more sacks than Aaron Donald. And I'm like, the fact that Aaron Donald's even in the same ballpark. It's, it's wild. It's heck of a, and look, I get that A gap, B gap. It's more of a straight line, but you have more help on the inside where I can mm -hmm. put a center, uh, can put a center guard, uh, double team and whatnot. It's harder for defensive tackles to get sacks. That's not a, a noose flash, a hyperbole or a hot take, Chris Carter. So sacks, my, my point is this, sacks aren't always the best measure of this player's successful. This player is not when it comes to interior defensive line play. Absolutely. But I think another part of this, too, is they don't need, as they're cu currently constituted, they don't need any of these guys to be super sack producers. They need them to stuff the run yeah. and to be supplemental to TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, and who I also think is coming, Nick Herbig, on the outside. Mm. I think if, if the interior guys are just good to decent at that part of the job and also shutting down the run, keeping the linebackers clean so that they can do that, too, that's what this defense needs. And if you're able to do that, you make yourself extremely valuable. Again, that's what I think Leal needs to do. That's what Benton, I think, is, is starting to do. Well, did last year, and I think he's starting to get better at. Um, and I'm interested to see a guy like what Logan Lee, a guy who comes out with the kind of frame that you want. Can he develop into a depth guy that help that helps there? All those are things the Steelers, I think, are looking at and should be looking at for this defensive line. If you were to if you were to look, Mark. At, at this at the Steelers at the Steelers defense do you see Keanu Benton maybe even supplanting a Larry Ogunjobi as like the next best defensive lineman behind Cam Hayward on this team next year if, if he takes the jump that I think he can make absolutely and 
I first learned about Keanu Benton uh, last year's Senior Bowl, where it was like, this guy might be the best player at the Senior Bowl. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. And you hear about him just absolutely wrecking game plans to the point where like a player like that in practice, it's like, hey, Keanu, go chill on the sidelines because we have to put some sort of offense in because you're absolutely wrecking every play. We saw flashes of that as a rookie and as he just gets more and more playing time. I get excited about him. You mentioned Herbig too, where it's like, how does Herbig crack this lineup? Because you're not taking TJ Watt off the field, you know, unless he needs a blow. Alex Highsmith, same thing, because he's produced at a very high level. But I think that's part of the reason why Marcus Golden's not back on the roster. I think that's part of the reason why you don't go and sign a Bud Dupree because of what Herbig's done with limited snaps. Yeah. That production level is there. You know, we I say Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree would have to play a special teams role because you have three dudes off the edge that just consistently make plays with the opportunities that they have. So it's like, I don't know if they, like, I don't know if this is stupid for me to say this, but like, could you move Herbig and Watt in, in you know, I don't really want to move Watt around. I love the matchup he has against right tackles, but Highsmith, could you get those three players on the field all at once? I know you don't want to destroy your depth, but like they're so good off the edge at getting to the quarterback. Like, you know, I think about it when you're in the backyard, let's just go pick the best players on the field and figure the rest out from there. I almost think about it where you like Cam Hayward, you like Ogan Joby, you like what you've seen in flashes with, with Benton, um, Leal, it hasn't been consistent through two years. We'll see what happens year three. But Absolutely. You just put your best players on the field. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if if there are ways to do that with this defense. But I, I see what Herbig did with the limited snaps that he had this last year. And it just, it excites me. It excites it, me, Chris. I, it should excite people. I think the Steelers defense has a lot going for it this upcoming season. But... We, I want to talk about how that'll match up with their opponents because tonight mm. the Steelers schedule will be released along with the entire NFL schedule. I want to talk about where you want to see some of these games the Steelers play. We know their opponents are. Now we just get to see the timing. I'll break that down and give you a preview here with Mark here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We got a lot more to discuss. But first, I want to remind you that we're also sponsored by Game Time. Game Time is the app that you can download right to your phone to make buying tickets to your favorite events a non-stressful endeavor. Because Game Time is, 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 is the app you can download. You can also go to the website GameTime.co and you can find tickets to everything from sports, music, to comedy, to theater events, anything near you. Game Time helps. In fact, if you're if you're abroad right now, you want to go to the NBA playoffs. Game Time gets you. It makes it so easy to get tickets and to make sure that you're seeing where you're sitting in all the games. Do you want to see the Wolves and the Nuggets to go, go throw it down in Game Five? Guess what? Game Time's got that too. But if you're in Pittsburgh, you can also do that too because there's great chances to see the Pittsburgh Pirates and Paul Skeens and how he's coming up in, in Major League Baseball. And you can save up to 60% off buy, off, off tickets, even buying up to the last minute, minute for tickets for very big events all across the city of Pittsburgh. For example, in June alone, we got Kenny Chesney coming, Lionel Richie, and of course, my boy T-Pain, all coming to Pittsburgh in June. Get your tickets via game time. Plus, they have a best price guarantee that can't be beat because if you find tickets in the same section in a row for less somewhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference of those prices. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase, or go to their website, GameTime.co. Terms and conditions apply. Again, use code Locked On NFL when creating an account on Game Time for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Mark Bergen of Believe in Steelers. Mark, let's go get rid. Let's give everyone a sort of teaser preview for the for the schedule release tonight. It comes out 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, you know, in the NFL release it. You can actually watch me on a live stream with D Channel 11, WPXI, with Jenna Harner and Shelby Cassessi over there. That's going to be a fun show. So if you want a lot of my live reactions and thoughts to it, go check me out there. But here's my preview for this, Mark. Let's look at the... The, the home and away games that aren't in the division. You got the Cowboys the for home games. You got the Cowboys, the Chiefs, the Chargers, the Giants, the Jets. So 
three real big opponents and two New York opponents. And then away, you got the Falcons, the Broncos, the Colts, the Raiders, the Eagles, and the Commanders. And as always, um, you know, this, that, you know, the, and now this year, this is the, they get more away games than home games this year. We know the first game of the season can't be the Chiefs. It can't be the Ravens because they're playing each other. We also know it can't be the Browns because they're playing the Cowboys, which means it can't also can't be the Cowboys. It also now can't be the Jets because they're playing the Niners. So now we have now basically knocked off uh, three of the teams, uh, to the three home opponents that are non-divisional and at least two of the other divisional opponents that could be home games. So if it's going to be a home game, the Steelers most likely would either be playing the Giants, the Chargers, or the Bengals. But it looks more likely it could be an away game with either the Bengals, the Falcons, the Broncos, the Colts, the Raiders, the Eagles they can't play because they're playing the Packers. It's another team there, so they're the one team out there. Or the Commanders. If I'm the NFL schedule maker, Mark, I'm looking right at that Denver Broncos a matchup mm. in Denver, Russell Wilson playing Sean Payton. Yeah. That's a that's the game that I'm circling here. Is there another game that you think should be being circled here as no. the first game to kick off the season? No, you've got it exactly right because the storyline writes itself. The Russell Wilson bull, whatever you want to call it, and the bad blood mm -hmm. between Sean Payton and Russell Wilson. And look publicly, and especially yeah. Russ, like they'll sell it of oh no right. you know, play it this down. Is that, yeah they'll play it down oh no 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 <laughs> and i also want this for this reason too chris early on in the year we don't know what the heck to expect from russell wilson there's still hope there's not bad play there aren't growing pains learning new personnel new system arthur smith getting used to all that from the steelers standpoint and Injuries are an inevitable part of football, too. You don't have to worry about injuries. So let's get that game early. Like if I have one wish as a Steelers fan, I want to see Russell play the Broncos in Denver early on in the season when you still have all the hope, the optimism, injuries aren't a concern. And again, just sign me up where it's like we need cameras during that game at all times on both yeah. Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. Uh, must watch television, especially if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Absolutely. I think that it's it's everyone's gonna be tuning in. I mean, hey, if you're a Steelers fan, you're tuning into every game. But I agree, like that's that's something nationally that could get attention, be like, oh, I want to see this because there was drama last year. And also, we don't know how either of these teams are gonna look because the Broncos most likely have a rookie quarterback in Bo Nix starting. The Steelers have a new quarterback in Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, whoever it's gonna be, but it, it'll be Wilson. Come on. It, like it, I, I agree be, with to start you. the it season, should be to start the season, but like especially with Bo Nix where it's like, oh, you traded me and ran me out of town for this. Another thing I never understood, and we're much more plugged in with this Pittsburgh Steelers than we are the Denver Broncos. Why did Sean Payton have to do the Broncos front office's bidding with yeah. that whole divorce last year? That never made sense to me where everyone was like, well, Sean Payton is pure evil and <laughs> you know, say what you want about Russ, even if you don't like him, he doesn't deserve this. Sean Payton was doing the bidding yeah. of – the Broncos front office and their ineptitude to even make that lopsided of a trade in the first place. So it's like, well, why is Sean Payton the one cast in a bad light? Because it wasn't his decision to bring Russ in. Remember, they had Nathaniel Hackett yep. as their head coach yep. the year before Sean Payton got there. That's never made sense to me, Chris. No. Never a lot made of things sense to me. To me. A lot of things with the Broncos don't make sense. Let's look at some of these other opponents here. The Steelers <laughs> are going to face a lot of talented quarterbacks, but also yeah. a lot of young quarterbacks because you get, you're getting, I mean, you, first of all, you have the division. You already have Lamar Jackson and Joe Burrow, but now you have Patrick Mahomes. You have Dak Prescott. You have Aaron Rodgers. You got Justin Herbig coming down. You have Kirk Cousins, you know, you know Jalen Hurts, uh, those guys as well. But then you also get the, the, the young quarterbacks there. You get – you know, Jaden Daniels is going to be there. You get uh, Anthony Richardson and the Colts, uh, who you didn't get to. We get, you get Bo Nix. Who knows? Maybe you don't get Kirk Cousins. Maybe you get Michael Penix. They'll get, they'll get Kirk Cousins. Uh, but, uh, you know, but you you're, you get a chance to play a lot of talented veteran quarterbacks and young quarterbacks that are still finding their way. And as far as records based off of last season, the Steelers go into this with having the third toughest schedule in the NFL, Mark. If I'm, if I'm, if you're the Steelers, when and how do you who, – who are the teams that you're circling as the toughest thing matchups for them this season, and when would you want to play them, early or late? 
or in the middle? Well, the Chiefs is the obvious answer is back-to-back Super Bowl champions. You get them at home, though, and yes. I think that that's key. And the Chiefs usually take a little bit of time to get going. So I would want the Chiefs early on. Maybe they have some of that Super Bowl hangover to where you could maybe steal one at home. I'd say maybe because I think even at home, you're still an underdog in that game going up against Mahomes, Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, and company. So to answer that question early, I notice, and I, I'm Petty Mark's going to come out on the pod for just a second here, Chris. Okay. You didn't mention Gardner Minshew and the Raiders. And this is a Gardner Minshew quarterback who led the Colts in week yep. 15 yep. and left the Steelers for dead <laughs> on a Saturday night in Indianapolis. We thought the season was over. We thought that Tomlin was going to have his first sub 500 season. So that's an easier matchup when it comes to if you just look at this at the quarterback position, Steelers have an uphill battle in the 2024 season. Now, you say the third toughest record, the thing that you have to kind of just, when you look at this schedule release, there is not really, I mean, maybe there's a correlation, but last season is last season. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really have any impact on the season ahead, but the quarterbacks and the star quarterback play, if you look at that, the opponents tend to, like, like, let's just look at this, right? All the teams in the division, probably better quarterbacks than the Steelers. You might be able to make an argument with the Browns. Chiefs, obviously. Chargers, obviously. Giants, okay, I could argue that. The Steelers have better quarterback play than the Giants do with Danny Dimes. I could argue it. The Jets, maybe I could argue that. Well, if you don't know what you're going to have with Aaron Rodgers, okay? So let's go look at the away teams. We already know the division. Falcons, Kirk Cousins, maybe. I don't know. Broncos, okay, I could make that argument. Colts, who knows with Anthony Richardson in year right. two coming off an injury. Gardner Minshew and the Raiders. Eagles, Hurts, your beat there. And then Washington, we really don't know with Jaden Daniels. My point is this. In more games than not, the team that you're going against has better quarterback play than you do. It's an oversimplification. It's what we do a lot of times in the playoffs of which team has the better quarterback. That team tends to win. It's not always, but that team with the better quarterback play tends to win football games. Steelers have their work cut out for them this season. It's just as simple as that. They, they certainly do. My last thing here, when do you want the bye week this year? Do you want – what kind of – where do you – I normally like the bye week to be like just after the halfway point because then that way you've gotten through. And granted, it determines – it's different every year because some years like you're banged up through the first four weeks and you just need that week five bye. And you're like, oh, thank goodness that's here to get everyone straight. But – if you're if I, if I'm a team and I want it generally like two years ago they got it in week nine I think that's a great spot you're in the middle of the season you can reset and get charged for the second half of the season uh, last year they had it in week six I felt like that was really early for the Steelers and you know when but the other thing though though is, is Mark is that this is a young team now like you have a lot of younger players a lot of rookies that are getting time guys on the rookie contracts getting a lot of playing time here so maybe this team doesn't need. Uh, you know, maybe this team could use an earlier bye week. What's your philosophy on where the bye week should go that benefits the Steelers the most? Let me stay at the quarterback position, Chris. <laughs> I'm going to go later okay. because of the conditional pick that goes back to Chicago. And it's like, well, mm. you're basing the entire bye week off of one draft pick. The difference between a fourth rounder and a sixth rounder, I think, is pretty substantial. If you have that bye week later and say the Steelers are like 500 or worse, then after the bye week, do you want to move and say, let's see what we have with Justin Fields for this last stretch of games? How the Steelers handle that, they'll evaluate it in quarters, first four games, first eight games, bye week. I think Justin Fields plays at some point in 2024. When? I don't know. And then what does that do to your locker room? What does that do to nine-time Pro Bowler Russell Wilson? I want to say later because of how they handle – when or if do you play fields this year? How does that go down in the conditional pick? I'm sure your listeners and viewers know all about this, but 51% of the offensive snaps, that's a fourth round pick to the bears. If it's less than that, it is a six round pick back to Chicago. Absolutely. He's Mark Bergen of believe in Steelers. Mark, thank you so much for joining us here. It's always great to have you on the show. Let people, let people can find you, follow you and get more of your work. Yes, Mark Bergen. If you just search me on social media, uh, Mark Bergen underscore on a lot of social media platforms. The kids watch on YouTube nowadays, though. So you can find Believe in Steelers with myself, 
two-time Super Bowl champion at Pittsburgh Steelers scout Ike Taylor on YouTube. Search Ike's name. You can search my name, Mark Bergen. That's B-E-R-G-I-N on YouTube, and you can find Believe in Steelers there. We will be live uh, Wednesday night tonight uh, for schedule release just with our live reactions. So uh, stay tuned for that. A lot of interest. And, uh, you know, I don't want to wish my life away, but get me between now all the way to September because I cannot wait for this upcoming season. And if this rookie class, Omar Kanyer 2, is anything like the 2023 rookie class, we are in for a treat, my friend Chris Carter. Thank you so much for having me here on Locked On Steelers. Thank you, Mark, for joining us. And thank you all for joining us here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, post gazette.com. Find me here every day, Monday through Friday, breaking down your Pittsburgh Steelers right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Back here tomorrow, breaking down what we think of the schedule and a lot more here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. <laughs>